It's good to know that you're still there. And of course, we're moving straight to our first discussion segment on the program this morning. Now we're looking at the impending strike about the labor union. They've been threats that, that October 16th will be the deadline in which we'll be having labor's go down tooling and have the whole economy shut down and some of the implications is what is before us this morning but before we go ahead the nigerian labor congress has written a letter to the state council of the union to prepare for an indefinite strike if the federal government fails to accept its demand for the consequential adjustment of salaries as a result of the new minimum wage by october the 16th 2019 after the first phase of negotiations collapsed due to percentage differences between the two parties, the federal government negotiating team and the Joint National Public Service Negotiating Council, which is representing labor unions in the negotiation for the total implementation of the new minimum wage, will meet again on Tuesday, October 15, 2019. How can the government take advantage of this meeting by the labor union that's on October the 15th? But before us this morning, we're looking at labor unions call for industrial strike. And of course, we have Comrade Ibrahim Olayu Walayunisa as our spokes, as our talking head this morning. It's great to have you in the studio. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good, Good morning, morning, man. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Now, the issue of minimum wage is becoming a lingering thing. Now, the expectation of many is that by now, the issue of consequential adjustment would have been resolved such that implementation would have begun, but that is not meant to be. Now, let's look at it. The belief of many people is that the labor, the workers have been used and they've been dumped. Now, the ones that hold on to this belief are saying, this is not the first time negotiation for a minimum wage will take place. Why is it that the current labor leadership in the country presently, why are they not getting things right? Have the workers been used and dumped? We can say yes. We can say yes. Because the workers, they are the instruments being used to generate whatever we have in the country. It's like a Yoruba saying that those who are working are in the sun and those who are reaping are under the shade. They use us not now they've been doing that for a very long time if you can recollect in 2011 there was something like this but the negotiation was smoother then than what it is now uh, it wasn't per se it wasn't per se until labor threats to go on strike government would not do anything hmm. that's the only language you hear Let's look at the level of percentage that labor is demanding increment. Now, demanding 29% salary increase for officers on salaries of level 07 uh, to, to 14 and 14. 24% adjustment for officers on salary grade level 15 to yes. 17 yes. and 11% salary increase for officers on grade 07 to 14. When you have this huge disparity, among the demand for labor in terms of increment in terms of this grade itself does it really portend well because if you look at the disparity in the percentage that labor is seeking is it advisable like how can there be 24 percent then you go down uh, far to 24 now 11 percent looking at this great level itself is this something that is sustainable and if you even look at it does it affect how will it affect the livelihood of those people, for instance, who will be collecting 11% increment. What we are demanding for is not much. It's not too much at Why all. do we have this gap, the disparity now, within this level grade, the grade level itself? You know, when we started this, there is disparity in grade level. Levels 1 to 6, 7 to 14, and 15 to 17. That, that is the natural. What that makes it natural? Because Are it, we saying that depends, they are not going to it, the same market? It, depends, so to on, get it depends on the year you spend in service. It depends on the level, the education you have before you join the service. Hmm. As a graduate, you join the service as level step two. Whereas, if you are not, 
If there is no educational background, you start from 01, 02, 03, and your bar is 06. But for those who are well read, maybe uh, HND, BSc, they start from levels, level A step 2. That's the baseline for it. And then as the year rolls by, then they start to move from one grade level to the other. Mm. And before they do that too, they'll be moving from one step to the other. This complex, the way you explained it, it appears complex to an ordinary man. Don't you think it's one of the reasons government is taking advantage of the complexity in terms of this percentage it's, itself? It's not, you can also, it's not, it's at not. a point in time, you heard what Ngige was saying, that they would be restructuring in terms of overhaul of the don't, public don't service Ngige. and retrenchment. doesn't know what he's saying. Uh, but when you have he this complexity, don't you think it's complex it's to not, explain all of this? It's not complex. It's not complex. You take, for instance, for example, now we are here. You are here now. You have a boss who is any higher than what you are earning. We have some people who are lower than you in Kedah. They are any lower salary. The same thing applies to us, those who are working as civil servants. So it's not complex at all. Now, the labor leaders are calling out workers on strike. Yes. And um, it has nothing to do whether with whether you are a state worker or you are a federal worker. Yes. Now... This battle, as of now, is with the federal government. It's with the federal government. Now, how come you are calling out even state workers to join the strike on the 16th of May when you don't even know whether the battle will shift to your state or not? We are state governments who are paying already, either literally or even in reality. But we have some who have expressed commitment. Can't the workers or labor leaders just wait till when this battle gets you know, to their uh, state's uh, government before they call out people there is something. Out there is something in labor. An injury to one is an injury to all. Mm. Other federal worker, other state worker, we are all one. So when state government refuses to pay, you also, <laughs> you embark on strike at the state level across the country. At the state level now, all the states, throughout the federation, we are going to embark on strike, come 16th of October. That will be next week Wednesday. If anything meaningful, positive is done by the government. This is what I'm saying. Yes. Let's take for instance of your state. Yes. As Governor Shima, can they informed you that he's going to pay or not? He said he's going to pay. He said he's going yes. to pay, just like the federal government said he's yes. going to pay. Yes. You know, at times it leaves me wondering whether the workforce or the labor leaders are not abreast of the reality on ground. With the state of things, with using Oyo State as an example now, okay. with the state of Oyo State economy, do you think the governor can shoulder and know the financial responsibility when he's barely struggling to pay presently? They are not struggling to pay. The problem is that there are so many loopholes. And these loopholes, the government has to do something on that. If the loopholes are still there, there may be a problem. But if the loopholes are not there, government can easily pay. Now, when you talk of loopholes, I could remember when you were negotiating with the Abiola and Jumobi's, you know, government yes. at that time. You were asking to reduce the cost of governance. Now, Shehima Kende is here. There are a lot of offices that are vacant. He doesn't have as many special advices as one would have expected a Nigerian governor to have. He's cutting his cloth according to his, his not even according to his size, according, according to his cloth, cloth yes. you know, realizing with the full realization of what is on ground. And yet, you still want the court of governance to be cut down. So, we are talking of a governor who has cut down the cost of governance, and yet he is struggling to pay. You are saying he's not struggling to pay, but don't forget what he told you that the state was technically bankrupt about three months ago. What does that suggest? The point is, when this is being realized, the increment in salary, when it's being realized, from the federal government, the allocation has to be increased. That's number one. Number two, when that is increased, the IGR in the state is on the increase now. Based on what they will get there, the IGR and um, other philanthropists. All of these are assumptions. No, it's not. Everything is based on assumption. Even, even what the federal government is doing is based on assumption. Let me come down when, to when we have a. 
let me come down to the people itself this disparity i will still come back to the issue of the disparity in payments there have been arguments in some quarters that what the average the highest grades in the civil service uh, it's aiming to collect now appears to be a major issue because it's not on the same level with the last grade that is supposed to be collecting 11 percent increment and now they are saying those are the highest grade will be collecting much and that most of these governors for instance have given excuses that they might not be able to meet that they might have a staggered payment which labor does not want to agree to but if you look at the statement of Ngige saying that there must be massive retrenchment, what effect will it have on the people itself if they go ahead with this? Because they are saying if you want us to implement 30,000 naira, then be ready to lose your job. What does that mean? I want to boldly say that Ngige is joking. <laughs> because if government wants to do that, even after resolving this, we go on for another strike because we know what is happening in the country we know the the, the senators the national assembly we know what they are taking either these from left from right from center their take home is more than 10 million let's assume it's 14 million the that of the government is sorry the president is 14 million the deputy that's the vice president is 12 million then the senators about 35 million in a month is that not too much you know if restructuring is to be done it has to be done across board you know mm. in 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 my intro this morning i put it that let's assume that all the representatives both at the green chamber and the red chamber okay the total number of representatives that nigerian you know elected to represent them at the federal level Let's put the figure at 500. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not difficult for the federal government to, you know, allocate 425 billion naira for these ones for one fiscal year. Will the organized labor allow the government to prune down the number? Because in terms of wages in this country, it appears that the higher the number, the lower your pay. Now, organized labor and, um, you know, the federal government are still battling, you know, are still arguing over the exact figure of what the numerical strength of workers is. The government believes this is the figure that will pay a month. The organized labor is saying no, you know, and all of that. So let's look at it. If the federal government will not dance signs, how will it pay? You know, these 30,000 you are talking about, Ngigi has come out with a figure, 580 billion naira. It's not sustainable. It's not achievable. If our government wants to be sincere, the actual number of workers they have should not be inflated. Mm. They should tell us the actual number they have. The statistics should be put on, put on table. Why are you doubting the figure? We are doubting by, the figure because, because we know what happens. Let, let me ask you we this know question. What is involved. Are we saying that there are no ghost workers within the civil service? Let's also remind ourselves of a particular case that was taken to court when Ajimobi was still the governor of some people who were collecting multiple alerts in terms of salaries here who are working within the public sector. If Ngige is saying that it's going to be downsized, nobody is want a system where the citizen will, will suffer, where the people will have hard toll of poverty. But are there no instances of um, ghost workers within the public service? And what is unions like yourself is doing to actually tame this kind of occurrence beyond the government saying this? Because it's a huge allegation on the labor executive and the labor union members itself, especially their top hierarchy here. It's unfortunate that you, you don't know what is involved. Mm. If somebody is saying he's having ghost workers, he should search himself. He should search people around him. Not even the civil servants. Not even the civil servants. Oh, can the government introduce ghost workers into it the system? It cannot be done without the knowledge of those in power. That's what I want to And So you are saying you know. that the monetization process in which they collect their lots, the government is aware of some of this compromise? It cannot be done without 
the people in power know what so is So how come Labour is deaf to this? How come Labour can't see this? These are your members. The, the only thing I know is that when Ajimobi was there, I'm not aware or I'm not involved or I don't know anything concerning these ghost workers. I've covered but, a case uh, in that I light. I know that there were people that were involved in examination problem. Uh -huh. Maybe some but, cases uh, that uh, are uh, this, is, this is about monies received by civil servants who uh, claim names of dead people on the list, on the payroll. They claim names and they collect collected multiple salaries they were taken to court. And as, this was... As you saying that... Mm. It cannot be done unilaterally. You know, all, all through the... It cannot be done Is it not about bulk passing? I was saying that the labor uh, union leadership cannot look at some of these issues as a part of weakness We here. can. We can. We, we, we can look into it. We can search. When that information gets to us, then we now find out. You know, I'm just wondering, when all of these were issues, real issues in this state, no labor leader came out to say, okay, that the politicians, the political class, should check themselves. Nobody faced that Jimobi to tell him that. Rather, we had people being taken to court and all that. Now, let's even look at the issue of, you know, salary preparation. Who are the ones who prepare salaries? The civil servants. Who are the ones on whose table it falls to reveal allegations or some, some civil discrepancies? Servants. Civil servants. So, why are they not calling out people? If that is the case, that the political class are to be blamed. This is how it's being worked. In each ministry, they prepare the salary. Who prepares? The civil servant. Okay. Prepares the salary. The salary is not being collected by means of finance and The civil servants collate again. The civil servant. So it, it falls within the purview of the civil servant. Yes, to it, it does. It does. But when somebody does something bad, and the head is there without thorough monitoring, then there may be a problem. If somebody sees that there is a loophole, so every Nigerian, if I may say this, is very greedy. So he knows what the boss is doing. So if he has little opportunity, he wants to key in. You know, I'm bringing this up because one of the issues at stake now is you know the organized labor kicking against the number given by the minister of labor and productivity chris Ngige, as to the number of workers on the payroll of the federal government you will recollect the millions of people or hundreds of thousands of good wo ghost workers that the former minister of finance kemi adi Oshun, you know recovered not even at once you know continuously she kept on revealing the new number of people who are ghost workers on federal government's payroll. Now, let's even look at this. This negotiation, why is it not going on simultaneously at the state level such that this strike will be justified at the end of the day? Take, for instance, Kirby State Government is paying. Kaduna State Government from September has started paying minimum wage. Yet, the labor leaders in Abuja wants to call out all workers in the country. So if I am on the payroll of the state government and my state government is paying, wouldn't that be a disservice to my state government asking me not to resume for work? Even those who are paying, the state that are paying now, there may likely be a problem because there's a yastic from the federal level. That's what we are waiting for. If we are able to get that one as a baseline, then we will now be sure whether the states that are paying, they are so changing those workers or they are overpaying. But the federal and state government doesn't pay the same thing. They don't pay the same thing. But once this thing, this, uh, this 30,000 has come to stay, it should be the same thing throughout. Hmm. I, I had throughout. to look for this to actually bring you back to the Ajimobi days. And of course, this news had it that government says as at then that it was using technology by using biometrics verification yes, to we weed it. out over 16,000 suspected ghost workers from the civil service system. And this just in your state. When we have instances like this, what is the leadership of the labor unions doing? What are you doing? Are you saying under your nose, under your purview, there could be people who compromise the process or some members of the leadership of the labor union too are aware of all of this development? We are not aware. Mm. 
16,000 yes, goes to workers. What we are saying is that the number you are quoting may not be correct. Mm. It may be bloated. It may be inflated. But can te te technology lie here? Because they said they, as at then they were going to apply the use the, of technology. The problem we used to have in all this administration, when somebody wants to go, you're not putting one or two people into the payroll. Mm. And that shoots the okay. figure. So you, you suspect that outgoing government, outgoing government normally put one this. or two people. Is this not about bulk passing? Because you were talking it about is, alleviating the sufferings of the of the workers in the country. Passing. If you see all of are we are we saying that labor leaders too are immune or the or the workers are immune to all of this development itself? But are we saying what that this saying doesn't exist? Ninety nine point nine percent of the workers they don't know exactly either increment ghost workers. We go on doing our diligent work. Mm. But only few that are very close to those in power, they may be involved in all this problem. We go to our place, do our work, get back home. Hmm. All these ghost workers, ghosts, ghosts cannot be done without somebody, either in or out, being involved. The organized labor, you know, appears to be serious with the strike. In 2011, I could remember you threaten to embark on strike and the only adjustment some persons had on their salaries was 900 naira yes. after much ado yes. um, don't you see that happening again this time so why should anyone you know there are a lot of workers who don't believe in labor leadership any longer if all you're going to bargain for them is an increment of 900 naira i haven't taken them through the situation now is quite point. different Everybody is aware of what is happening. Everybody is aware that the workers are sovereign. And I want to let you know that if the workers are sovereign, there may be no economic growth mm. because we feed the populace. What's the sincerity of purpose of the labor leadership itself? You know why I'm asking the question. They've been backlog. We are look very, at, very sincere. How sincere are you? Because if you look at the backlog of some of these workers in some states, 18,000 naira minimum, which has not been fully paid as backlog. And now we have the leadership of labor at states uh, and, of course, across the federal level, uh, screaming that there must be implementation of 30,000 naira minimum wage. What happens to the backlog of 18,000 naira? Is labor really looking at these issues very critically? If a state like Kogi, a number of the workers are saying that we have not been paid our salaries in terms of the backlog of 18,000 naira for several months, running into several billions of naira. And now we have labor across board saying that we want implementation. What happens to that 18,000 naira backlog? What is Labour doing about that? When we have a directive from the national, it has to be taken to each state. Each state will not sit down with the government in power for that state. This is what is happening. They have the fact, the statistics on the table. They now say, is it possible for us to do this? And once the Labour knows that, what the government is saying is the truth because we have our statistics too our people work there we know what is happening if government says well, there are ghost workers if uh, our people say there are no ghost workers we know there is a problem you know when government is not saying that they will downsize because we have a number of workers we have our own statistic too then we now say the number you are quoting they are not up to How that. do you draw up your own statistics? What is because the measurement? Because our people are working there. Mm. Our people are everywhere. I want to also ask you this. What happened to Labour since Oshomole left? Because we know as a matter of fact, when Labour says it's going on strike, is a big issue for the government. But these days you find out that when Labour even tried things, the government waits and waits for the dying minutes to actually call Labour to a round table and somehow Labour swinging. Look at what happened. Let's refresh our memories during the oil subsidy protest itself. Nigerians supported labor to a tail end. We want, many Nigerians wanted a change in the way we look at things in terms of the pump price. But somehow, labor, 
shifted out of that particular protest and strike action and everybody went back and this is where we are today with the 118 naira per liter of petroleum product now labor is saying that minimum wage or nothing how sincere because i keep asking sincerity of purpose and what happened to labor union since oshomale left the people in labor circle they are also human beings and they be individual differences are there you know when we have uh, the nsc the tuc in nsc we have uh, the agyro faction is this healthy it's not it's not but uh, is that not the major this, this problem around, you're having this time around is not like that because before you sustain yourself before you sustain yourself you must be any some little little naira at the end of the month you are saying and we are using the same market. You are saying this time around, you know, mm. as it, if, it will not be so the same. So the continue. As what has he ended? As if something has changed. And <laughs> the reality is that nothing has really changed. Now, let's look at it. Are you aware of allegations against labor leaders at the federal level and at, you know, the state level? I don't want to mention a particular union. There is this particular union. Allegations, you know, are hanging around their neck both at the federal level and at the state level Allegations and we don't get to hear them you know just to portray the points that you know to give on what of the fact that they've been bribed and truthfully it's, it's, you don't get to hear much from i can tell you that it's perhaps just one union that has been sadly you know that has been taking up this responsibility of negotiating with the federal government it's over not, this it's not one union it's not one union how come we don't get to hear of the other unions we we have NSC, we have TUC, mm. and we have Joint Negotiating Council, Public Service National Joint Negotiating Council, which comprises of the TUC and NSC. Without the NSC, TUC cannot act. Without TUC, NSC cannot act. It's not one. Take for instance, in this other state, we have five uh, unions, unions that are taking part or let me call it five cent three centers we have center one center two center three that form the joint negotiating council it cannot be done by either one or two okay let it me tell you now you're talking about uh, your state yes you know a lot of workers there's this rumor there's this allegation that one of the unions in your, your state have been bribed by the governor. Which of the union? And, and Which, so, no, governor? It, it, Which we, governor? The sitting governor. And so uh, there are some workers who are abreast of this. They are saying that, come, we know that this is your minimum wage. When it comes it's to your state, is dead on arrival. It's, it's an unfunded rumor. The, the last administration could not have given anything to any union. And this administration, I'm very, very sure that he has not given anything okay. as I, I was to going to ask you what's the principle what is the principle of aluta continua are you living in that mandate itself what does it mean to say aluta continua the struggle continues we are mm. still there the mandate given to us by our people by the workers the entire force is that we should go on strike mm. because we do before we do anything we need to consult we hold meetings, several meetings here and there. Then let's then look at the cost implication of all of that. When you say that is a lucha continua, what happens to the cost, the impl implication of the cost itself on the people, on the economy, on the masses? What happens at the end of the day when you shut the economy and you come back to a rallying table again with the government and um, we see neighbors saying we are calling off our strike, which we saw before the elections itself. What will be the cost implication of all of this? Did you actually look at that? Let me start this way. Labor, we are human beings. We are relatives. We don't want to cause problem for anybody. So how would Nigerians benefit from this your strike? It's not in our hand. It's in the hand of the federal government. They will benefit. Because if you get what you are aspiring for, we are going back to the market. But at the onset like this, when the problem starts, then we need to be patient a bit. But do you think that it's healthy for this economy 
that the labor and the government will determine what happens in the economy. You know, it, it appears as if you're not just being fair to Nigerians. You cannot equate the total number of workers in Nigeria, both at the state and federal level, with the number of other people who don't, you know, draw their income the from number, the government. The number is very small. The number of labor is very small. And so how but come we you are, are determining what we are We are the one feeding the economy. Some persons will tell you that is not the truth. That is the truth. That is the truth. Okay. Here you are working now. Whatever you earn at the end of the month, you go to the market to buy one or two things. But I don't draw my income from the government. That's, and that applies to, you know, millions of people. And you, we talk of these markets. Either you draw your money from, or your salary from government or not, those who are coming to you, either for advertisement, one thing or the other, you don't know their sources mm, of but, income. But, but really, in as much and as... That's, that's where you get your income. Comrade, in as much as we sympathize with labor itself, how is the labor leadership working towards ensuring that you mentioned that the cost of governance is very expensive? You looked at the take home of some of these major big reasons in society and you feel as a matter of fact that it's just too excessive. What are you doing about all of this development? We had expected, for instance, that labor would have gone on a mass protest to say that there must be reduction in the cost of governance. But what did we see? We saw a labor saying they are protesting insecurity. Then a lot of people wondered what security uh, mechanism does labor have? When you have instances like this, is labor really paying attention to what it needed to pay attention to? What are you doing about cost of governance so that the plight of the ordinary man who are workers in our different sectors of the economy could be uh, addressed itself. Except you sell in the history. Labors nowadays, we don't go on strike just anyhow. Mm. There is change. Scientific fight. That's what we do now. Mm. When you get your statistics, you're not right. Is that get, are you, you getting start, results? Yes. With this we can we, we can we can get results. We can get results. It's because our leaders are very heady. Mm. They are insensitive to apply it. That's the problem we are having. There may be no problem in the country if the leaders are upright. You know, experts have said that rather than asking or calling for an upward review of salaries, productivity should have been, you know, the main focus. Organized labor should look at how it can improve productivity. Now, the labor leaders want the government to pay more. But how many labor leaders ask how their workers are faring at their places of job, at their primary place of assignment? Is productivity increasing to justify the call for these, you know, incremented wages? Productivity is increasing. You think so? Yes. How come if, the revenue base of the government is the decreasing? Government is not de it's not decreasing. It's not declining. It's not increasing. If it's it is not, not declining. declining, why would the federal government, you know, introduce the issue of that? Now, you are saying that the, the, the revenue base of the government is not declining, but that's on the contrary. It was when the government discovered that it cannot continue, its revenue base is declining, that it had to look for other means, you know, to show up its revenue. If, if you heard Buhari about one or two weeks ago, he said the economy is even improving. The political statement. Experts will not agree to that. Anything that comes from him is, hmm. is the, you, that's you, the truth. You know, in as much as we, we, we pay, apart we, from that, we, the IGR two is increasing. Hmm. This fact they want to introduce is uh, like saying you give a child something on the left hand and, and you collect And these are things the right that organized right. labor should be what to end we up spending been, your money have. on. We didn't get to see anything happen. You know, nothing happened over the pump price increase. You know, the issue of that, you are not bringing up all of these issues. So when you get the money at the end of the day and it cannot get you anything in the market, is that the best thing? It's not the best thing. What you are saying is that we are using the same market. Either you earn low, you earn high, hmm. you, you are on the average. Comrade, we just market. have to let you go. But, but before we let you go, some of your parting shots, in as much I believe more in the people, having the people live a better life and having an environment where workers could work and get their pay home in terms of get their uh, dispensable income without fear. 
of actually going to the market you know what are some of your patent shots and what can you do beyond just going on strike and shutting down the economy what is the way forward the way forward is for government to listen to us if we face to listen to us there's nothing stopping us from going on strike. so on the 16th of october the workers want to resume to work is that what you're seeing at the evening the night of 16th october the following day we start going on strike yeah. thank you so what much what we're saying is that government should be sincere to all our pleas then we are now using this medium to tell the people that matter in the society to come to our aid because we have a lot of people that can influence government and what we are now saying is that instead of using or taking three people at a state to represent us as the upper house there you can choose one what are they doing one senator one senator as of right members and how many would you recommend Two will be enough for a state. Mm. Okay. We must say thank you so much to Comrade Ibrahim Olayi Wala Yunusa. He's actually the state chairman, senior staff of um, Nigeria Association. Uh, Association. Of okay, staff Association of Nigeria. It's great to have you. You're a comrade and also a union yeah. member. Thank you for being here this thank morning. You. And we've been looking at um, Labor Union's call for industrial strike. We hope that all parameters will be met and some of the agitation will be looked at by various authorities concerned so that we do not have a total blackout of the economy itself. We'll take this break. When we come back, it will be another guest and another topic. Please stay with us.